it's he's still supporting the team so we'll allow him to continue to support the team yeah even the though last, it is not a, a good team to support the last time i checked <laughs> <laughs> we'll finish ahead of you. Uh, how many players do you have EPL. now? <laughs> how many players? How do you many have? players played the last game against Wolves? How many players played? That's, that's your answer, right? Yeah. Don't worry. We are still selling. We are shipping some away. But Kepa Zoud is still strange. I don't know. How did he fall out with uh, Real Madrid, right? Uh, yeah, he, we sent him there on loan. Uh, he won. He actually helped them to win yeah, the yeah, Champions yeah, yeah, League. Yeah, yeah, he did. And now he's going on loan at Bournemouth. Mm. Let's see. Let's see how that plays out. Well, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in the country. So we are being told that there potentially could be a food shortage. Yeah. There potentially could be a food shortage. So uh, we're being told that some monies are being released to deal with the dry spell that is happening in the uh, northern parts of the country. Yeah. Um, we, we get a lot of food for, from there. You know, a lot of maize, a lot of yams, a lot of, you know, all of these grains, uh, yeah. millet and all of that and a host of you know other food crops and yes. the farmers who planted their crops are supposed to be you know seeing some yield by now especially those who planted early but unfortunately mm. um they are not able to reap what they have sold right because yeah. of a dry spell the rains haven't come down and what have you and so it's causing a problem which potentially could lead to food shortage and so a raft of measures have been announced uh, to make sure that we're able to deal with the situation uh, so we understand that about eight billion or so is being mm. released we understand that a lot of the farmers who have lost their crops because of the dry spell mm -hmm. are going to be given for example a thousand ghana cities per hectare um you know our borders are being closed or our borders are being patrolled so they are being closed to exportation yeah. you know of uh, of of foodstuffs out of this country among other things um and we're being told that if we don't take care by September, <laughs> Ghana will be facing a, a food shortage crisis. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's, a, it's a serious situation that we have on our hands. It, it is. It mm. is. Um, I'm looking at the measures, right? Mm. I think the major one, aside the money, the 8 billion, which is a good initiative because the most affected are the commercial farmers. Yeah. Who invest heavily in their business right definitely paying 1000 ghana cities per hectare would not be enough but of course it's a relief a relief is not supposed to get you everything you sunk in your investment that mm -hmm. that makes sense my shoe is a ban on export of greens yeah we've been here before i mean we don't have enough in here so why is it that the one we have in here we have to export we you need to keep the ones we have in here rates. to make sure that we are food sufficient i think that's the rationale behind no problem the ban no problem uh, subsequently, we will engage the sector players. But what I gather is that when we had SS, there were calls on government to mop up, buy, and store. Mm. That did not happen. To the extent that the farmers were selling their produce cheap locally until the Burkina Bays came in to mop up the SS produce in the system and then paid reasonable prices to the farmers that's what got the farmers to make money right so if government had the information about excess produce in the market and we could have as a country bought them kept them for a dry season like today that we are now talking about and we didn't you are telling the farmer that this time around don't sell to the foreigners no problem how much are you willing to pay for it you get it it's not just about saying that do not export okay is there a readily available market to the farmer today mm, how I, much i think the, the minister mentioned that yesterday at the news conference yeah. that the district agric officers yeah um if you have any grain that you are willing to sell they provided numbers and contact to At how much? persons <laughs> that, that, that's that, the that, point that, that, my, that my issue is because the, issue be. the farmers are not father chris mass they made investment that they must recoup how much are we willing to buy the green? And that could discourage them from exporting. That's the point I'm making. It's just like smuggling of cocoa beans. When the Avorians are paying higher, there's that motivation for it to be smuggled. If the reverse is the reality, there's no motivation for anybody to smuggle the beans. So yes, um, this is obviously uh, a force majeure, as they say. Nature. Uh, 
of course we the dams we sank uh, did not help because they were just, just dug out so they dried up well, the together one, with the, the dug the one the one village one dam yes dug out dug out yes. yeah but there are there are various i don't know there are various you know irrigation projects you know or ir- irrigation yeah. you know dams um, in the northern part of the country, I think there should be about three of them or yeah, so. Tamale and Amangades. Yeah. Those farming along those lines mm-hmm. have uh, we're, we're able to get access to water, but mm-hmm. it's not it's not far-reaching enough. That's the that's yeah. the point we've yeah. always been making. It's not far-reaching enough. Yeah. You know that's this is where you know a very uh, important project like the one village one dam, if it had actually been executed properly, you yeah. know, would have really come into help because yeah. of you know the dry spell uh, that we have. But of course, the dugouts would not be able to do anything i mean it's That's it's dry and so no water yeah. will be there to help the farmers and yeah. um it's nobody's fault it's nobody's fault really that the rains didn't come down oh no 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 no. right no, nobody but, it's but if we fault, had prepared it's better it's somebody's fault that we didn't prepare better exactly. yeah well don't forget that it's a country that has irrigation authority what has the ghana irrigation authority been doing all yeah. this well is yeah. it a, an issue with with resources have yeah. they complained about resources because yeah. i barely had them complain about resources and how yeah. do they even embark on their duties to ensure yeah. that if the rains don't come because in <laughs> 2024 you don't leave everything to nature yeah and of course that is and you know with climate change also also happening you also need to put in place to yeah. mitigate these things when they happen we haven't done that so yeah, we are. We, so, so partly, I think we should we should accept the blame. And when I say we, I'm not talking about you and I. I mean, authorities yeah. should should accept part of the blame that we failed to plan ahead. But it's good. It's good. That the government has devoted eight billion Ghana cities yeah. to attend to this. Yeah. Uh, we just hope and pray that the greens we have will be enough to sustain us mm-hmm. uh, because it, greens are staple. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why the exports are being banned. Exactly. Yeah. No, I get, no, and Dr. Koku was free. Mm-hmm. The immediate past agri mm-hmm. minister. Yeah. The ban was in place for God knows how long. It didn't change anything. We've been here before. Ah, I remember covering that story of uh, a ban on export of greens. Of greens, yeah. Yes, and cereals. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's been there. But I wonder what this means for our, our school feeding initiative. Yeah. Already we were being told that the kind of the quality of food yeah. was nothing to write home about. Now yeah. that we are going to have scarcity of yeah. food, how are we going to ensure that uh, these kids are provided the necessary meals yeah. and that, that 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 is balanced diet to ensure True. that um, mm-hmm. they get you the know, best yeah, and with, benefits with, from with eating buffer stock and all yeah. of that. How much grains do they have? You but, know, how much stock no, do they no, have? No, Ghana, it will shock you guys that they will not be farming. We will we'll still true. Mm. You know, but the, the we'll government needs to the government needs to do what it can. I mean, now and do it very oh, yeah. effectively mm-hmm. have the yeah. grain inflation stored and obviously. all of that obviously otherwise yeah, inflation will drive the yeah. whole inflation otherwise if, if if government doesn't buy a lot of these grains from the farmers and then begin to store them you know in the warehouses mm-hmm. that we have there are individuals who are going to begin to buy these grains now mm-hmm. that they are there and then they will hoard them yeah and eventually it could potentially cause an artificial shortage and then they will yeah. wait until the demand is so high and the price mm-hmm. is so high that is when they will start releasing them what's there are individuals who do that what's wrong with that is that, that government ought to have done that is, is, is that not that's cal- what is the that silos color, have you seen color the color silos i'm coming no no no. that's not color bullet uh, <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, let, 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 let's get no the no difference. no i'm, I'm gonna say that no, but I mean, if, if we are facing if we are facing a full shortage problem right and then you're a businessman and then and then you have the storage facility to buy green yeah so they intentionally buy the grains and then intentionally like what no i'm saying that intentionally buy the grains uh-huh. and then hoard the grains okay. when we know that store them. yeah no hoard i'm <laughs> saying hoard hoard the grains <laughs> when we know that it's not in the system okay and it's very difficult to come by in the system and yeah. it has become very very scarce in the system yeah right yeah then they will sell them they begin to release them and sell them at very very high prices that is what i'm talking oh, okay. about okay i get you so the government needs to put in place measures to ensure that you know people and usually when it ha- happens like that you know it, it, it people yes people need to make their profits and all of that but it becomes too exorbitant and at the end of the day is you and i who suffer with the high food prices Good. right and it contributes to food inflation i agree with you so but we shouldn't allow that to happen that's what you. i'm saying but i agree with you and you are right so that that's what brought about the calabule days and yeah i get you yeah but in this case it's different so we will definitely do what is inspected as citizens not what is expected right that's the assumption that's how come we have laws now there's a system in place to ensure that 
than time when you need maize, you get maize. And that system is supposed to be run by individuals we put in positions of power, right? Mm. Now we have silos. Even as far back as the days of Nkrumah, we had silos. Under the special government initiative, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Headed by Hawa Kumusen then. There were money monies devoted out of the one million dollar per constituency for construction of warehouses. And the warehouses were supposed to store food stuff, including grains. Yeah. Right. Some of them were constructed. They were constructed. And there's evidence to the fact that they were constructed. Some of them are being used by the buffer stock company, which buys food produce from the farm fire the farm gates and then the suppliers and whatever. What I'm saying is that as a system, as as a state, we could have bought as much as we, we could or as much as was available. That would have prevented that woman, whom you are businesswoman, whom we are today saying who engage in Kalabule, who has invested her money into buying the greens, storing the greens, greens, which could have gone bad for her to lose everything. And now when she's releasing them onto the market, obviously she will recoup her investment. Yes, we discourage her from exorbitant uh, profits, but she will still have to recoup her investment. That's the point I'm making. So the state should make it possible for you not to be calabulated. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And that's what I've been saying. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree that's what you. I've been saying, essentially. And so um, these stories find way uh, to the front pages of the various newspapers on the Daily Graphic. Uh, the headline, how the he Daily Graphic captures it is uh, Government outlines 8 billion Ghana City Agri support provides 1,000 Ghana cities per hectare incentive for farmers. And uh, Brian Echampon, the Agri Minister, um, addressed the media yesterday. The Finance Minister was there as well. I think the Minister for Defence was there as well. Uh, so it wasn't just, um, I mean, you can tell that it's a, it's a, it's a very serious situation. If we have not just the Agric Minister coming to address uh, the media, but we have, you know, all of these uh, ministries coming together, it tells you of the, you know, severity of the situation, that if it's not dealt with appropriately, we could have a, a food crisis on our hands. So, you read about it on page 3 of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Um, also, President inaugurates Temamoto Way School Junction Road Project. Yeah. Uh, effect of Galamse risk of cleft lip rises hmm. and also multi-billion city roads initiative launched in tamale so uh, that's it for the daily graphic newspaper on the back page stored labonia citrus project uh, turned haven for miscreants huh. that's serious hmm. and also digital transformation drive focus of ict week celebration so uh, that's the daily graphic newspaper Okay, um, let me give it again in terms this morning. Government begins Temamoto Way reconstruction, a project to cost $350 million, expected to be completed in 36 months. And yesterday I was on the motorway. Uh, yes, there are signs of works being done. There have been signs of works being done yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for a while now. Yes, uh, so um, the president has finally castled for that project to begin. Yana Hills government for dedicating uh, for dedication towards improving road infrastructure in northern region and uh, Akosombo Dams village 200 million Ghana cities released to resettlement project for resettlement project so Akosombo Dams village 200 million Ghana cities released for resettlement project a looming food crisis greens export banned due to prolonged dry spell in eight regions um, okay so that's the story you were, were talking about yeah the other headlines here back page of the Ghanaian times don't use drip equipment for illegal mining ashanti regional minister <laughs> is warning uh, yeah, you should ensure you should ensure yeah. that drip equipment is not used for illegal for galamsey yeah, yeah the, 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 the equipment should not be on the galamsey that say my drip it my drip it my yeah. drip it you know that's one of the reasons why they even decided not to add excavators to the drip equipment. Oh, okay. So that's it doesn't make because before I realized the excavator will be, you know, on someone's illegal mining site. Yeah. You know. And, and the illegal mining is still ongoing. You know, recently some, you know, journalists and other people had to accost some Chinese and hand yeah. them over to the police. I think they were uh, mining in a forest reserve. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's still a big problem that is happening. 
And um, we, we have not decisively dealt with Galamse. Yeah. We haven't decisively dealt with it. And I, 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 I don't know why we're unable to deal with it. I don't know whether it comes down to political will to deal with the Galamse problem or we are just not getting the solutions right or we are not able to even read and see what the problem is properly, yeah. you know, to deal with it. I, I, I really don't know because we've thrown everything at it from banning illegal small-scale mining, from banning mining in general, you know, to operation um vanguard yeah. to operation what yeah to operation galam halt operation halt galam stop and then know. now now uh, i think uh, uh, okay <laughs> why <laughs> i was going to say now we are at operation let's go on <laughs> eh, that is what it looks like operation let's go on you know to all kinds of things to we are going to provide alternative sources of livelihood for people who are engaged in galam say to community mining you know to training people in how to uh, properly, you know, do small scale binding to securing drones. Drones, you remember the drones? I re- wonder if the drones ever worked, you know, to securing drones, to, you know, do all, all kinds of things, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to the president putting his presidency on the line. And we are yeah. here. And the Galamse fight is not won. And mm-hmm. Galamse is still going on in earnest. And there are still, you know, Chinese mm-hmm. and local people, you know, our very own Ghanaians who are engaged in the Galamse and devastating. Yeah. You know, and all of this is causing, is, is contributing to the climate change that we have. It will surprise you that yeah. this, these Galamse activities are uh, potentially linked to even the drought that we are having. You talked about the, you know, the cleft, in the, in the cleft, northern cleft, parts of the country, cleft. Yeah, cleft. Yeah, yeah. On, uh, I mean, the risk of uh, effects of Galamse, mm. risk of cleft lip. Yeah. You know, babies who are born and then they have these cleft lips. Their, their lips are yeah. divided because of polluted waters, waters and you yeah. know all of that. So it's 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 I, I I don't I don't know. One day, one day, one day we'll get there. But to me, it looks like it comes down to political will. Yeah, that is what it looks like to me. It, it comes down to the political will to fight Kalamsi, and it is just not there. And the love for money, too. you know. Bev, the final headline from the back page of Ghanaian Times: Bev defect linked to heavy metals, chemicals used in Galamsey. That's according to Dr. Ampoma. Yeah, Dr. Ampoma has been at this crusade for a while from KNUSD. Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right. So Daily Guide uh, newspaper is what I have, and we've achieved more than you. Baumia Javs Mahama also Nanaka sword for Accra Tema Motorway project. Government bans grain exports and police bust motor. Sorry, police bust notorious car thieves. Over 100,000 Ghana card applicants under proof, and we have been told that they attempted registering multiple yeah. times. So yeah. they have been investigated by the National Identification Authority. Back page of the Daily Guide Mbappe's goals will come. Um, the coach is assuring him there's been a lot of pressure on the young man ever since yeah. he joined Madrid. And also, Toga Tops West Coast PGA tournament, and that's the golf tournament, and Kets Okreku. It's a critical part of his name. No. Ket. Ket. No. Ket. Yeah. Ket. Okreku is part of his it's name. Manteda yeah. is not Manteda part of his name. Manteda is not It always confuses me. Yeah. The GFA president addresses GFA Congress later today. All right. All right. Um, on the Daily Dispatch newspaper this morning, I am a VIP or I am a vice president with no authority. I will implement my own ideas if I become president. And uh, Dr. Bamia said this to us. Mm-hmm. at the media encounter on on, on, on Sunday. Yeah. Also, NDC names 48 spokespersons on its 2024 manifesto. Yeah. Mahama only fulfilled 28% of his manifesto promises. We have done 80%. That's according to Dr. Bavia. So he says 80% of the NPP's promises made in their previous manifesto yeah. have been fulfilled. fulfilled. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, uh, the, the, the party just didn't mark its own manifesto achievement. It also decided to mark that of its opponent. Yes, say yeah. that they did only 28%. Okay. Yeah, so the politics is at play anyway. Uh, Baumia's, friendly, Baumia's four friendly jabs at Mahama last Sunday. Uh, so take a look at that also on the uh, Daily Dispatch newspaper. So that's it. Okay, Daily what Post. Dispatch. Daily Post this morning. EC and MPP's plot against NDC on voting day exposed. As 26 registered voters in Tamale South have their names transferred to Pusiga without their knowledge and consent. So, um, and I'm told I saw a, a circular from the voter region too, where complaints were that 
some names had been moved from one polling station to the mm. other, from one constituency to the other. But that's what this business is about. Just mm. go get your details checked. And have but I'm, yes, I'm told the short code equally is encountering some problems. There mm. are some, they key in the request, the 50 persons is deducted, but they never get the feedback. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's a challenge. And especially given how tight people's shadows are, especially mm. workers. Mm. This might be the only convenient way to verify. Yeah. Uh, mind you, there are many people who will say that I didn't register just this year, right? So my name has so always, my name been, has always been, been no. We are dealing with data. Anything can happen. Somebody can move a Kaza somewhere and it will throw your name from Pusiga to where else? Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the other headlines here. Eye infection outbreak among children linked to human contact. That's according to Dr. Obinyako and Mahama to campaign in seven constituencies in Greater Accra region today and tomorrow and Mohammed's first 120 days social contract with the people of Ghana. That is it for the... Do you, know, do you know why I'm not really moved when politicians or people make these complaints during exhibition yeah. exercise? I remember yeah. before the 2008 election, yeah. one word kept dominating, CD-ROM, CD-ROM. CD and at yeah, the time, yeah, yeah. the opposition yeah. made claims that the CD-ROM has been doctored. Exactly. CD-ROM. If you know what the CD-ROM is, it can, it it's, it's, it's read-only memory. But politicians, some way, somehow, yeah. made all of us believe that it's somebody been, was doctoring CD-ROM. It's been, been doctored. And they sent us all yeah. on a wild goose chase. Hugo, that's a very <laughs> nice memory. Let me bring you my memory of a similar claim. You know, I'm sure you know facts. Everybody knows facts, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the facts, facts have been doctored. No, they say it was intercepted. <laughs> the f- so you fax the EC will yeah, fax results yeah, from one yeah, region, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, to yeah. it that yeah, it was intercepted and retained changed. at the a- STL office. <laughs> yes. And there was an <laughs> STL yeah, office here. Yeah. So Samuel Ugu, Samuel Ugu <laughs> led some group of tags to that place that they should open the office. Yeah. That's where the interception takes place. Yeah. And then by the time the results, fax will fax. <laughs> Clap for us. That's our politicians. <laughs> the kind of things they can By the time you. the results get to the ECN quotas, somebody <laughs> has intercepted it. Yeah, and transmogrified it. and then transposed and interposition. Before, 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 before fax. Hey, yeah. that's magical. Yeah. That's like you sending a mail, right? Before the mail arrives, somebody catches this in the air, edits it, and then resends it. No, but those are waiting for electronic voting in Ghana. It will never. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the story should be crazy. The story should be crazy. Anyway, but it's here, it all adds to the euphoria of it. Like, uh, I guess it's my turn now. The Daily Statesman newspaper. MIF records 100% profit increase in 2023. Also, 8 billion Ghana CD relief for farmers to mitigate effects of drought. Hold on there, farmers. Yes, yes. And uh, speaking of farmers, uh, let's get onto the phone line and speak to uh, the president of the Peasant Farmers Association. He's joining us on the line for us to have a conversation. Um, yesterday, there was a press conference. Uh, by, you know, uh, the Ministry of Agrig, the Ministry of Finance, uh, the Ministry of Defense. And it's all got to do with the potential food crisis situation that we are faced with here in this country. We're told that by September, uh, we could potentially be facing a food crisis. And so a raft of measures were announced. Uh, Dr. Charles Nyaba uh, is a former president of the Peasant Farmers Association. And he joins us on the phone line now. Uh, Dr. Nyaba, good morning. Uh, Welcome to the Morning Star. Uh, good morning. Let me correct my position. I was a former, uh, I was executive director, so now former executive director. Okay, former executive yeah. director. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you for that correction. Um, so, um, y- yesterday a raft of measures were announced by government to deal with a potential uh, food crisis situation that we could have on our hands. Uh, we're told that by September, like I've been mentioning, if we don't take care, uh, we could be facing a food shortage crisis. And so, 8 billion Ghana cities, uh, that is $500 million, you know, has been outlined to help farmers and to help us deal with the situation. Uh, 1,000 Ghana cities per hectare, you know, for farmers who have been affected severely by the drought uh, and all of that. What do you make of these raft of measures that have been announced to deal with the situation that we have on our hands? Okay, so once again, good morning to yourself and the listeners. And then thank you for giving us opportunity to be part of this conversation. 
You know, for the announcement, uh, we did the timing because when we saw the signals coming, on many platforms, uh, we had opportunity the ministry, we drew the attention of what is happening. Uh, but on the other hand, I think certain times, uh, government takes decisions without actually considering certain factors. For instance, we are the victims, and at the same time, we are supposed to be the beneficiaries. We raise our land, we are, we are elect. So whatever decisions you are taking to mitigate the effect on us, we need to be part. That is the first point. Otherwise, you may take a decision, and by the end of the day, it doesn't really address the main challenge. Now, in terms of the impact, it's real, and then it's not limited to only the northern part of the country, but also the middle belt is also another area that is impacted. So the impact is real. That one, there's no way we can deny that. Giving 1,000, maybe you didn't get it right, I think it's a 1,000 Ghana cities per acre, not hectare. Um, oh really? Um, we we're told it's one thousand cities per hectare. That's what we we're told. Or has has the, has uh, contrary information come that they are going to do it per acre now? Anyway, I have not listened to the press conference, but I think yeah. I was we we're told that there's one thousand Ghana cities per hectare. That is what was actually announced uh, uh, yesterday at that okay. uh, press briefing. It's per hectare. Okay, so let's take it per hectare. If you do the total crop budget for one acre. It's about 6,000 Ghana cities. Total crop budget for one acre is 6,000 Ghana cities. One hectare is two and a half acres. So um, for me, it's good, but I think it's woefully inadequate. That's one, one, one angle. Secondly, how is the distribution going to be done? We have concern because in the past, we have similar experiences. When allocating men to address the the impact, there are better people who are nowhere closer. And we are seeing the same Because in the first place, we represent the mouthpiece of small water farmers in the country. So we're expecting that we all come together to plan and see how this is going to be done. Because so, so far, we don't know the strategies that are going to be used. Okay. So the measures is okay, but we think that they need to do broader consultation. The other part that I have serious concern has to do with uh, the quick measure that government take to ban export of certain commodities without actually doing proper analysis to know the commodities that are affected, to know the total crop budget of the farmer for us to agree on fixed price. We said this because when things like this happen, you don't only look at one side. You also look at the impact on the producer. Last year mm, and last two years, when Ghana restricted movement of certain commodities, the domestic market could not give farmers competitive prices. It takes soya beans, you take maize, you take rice, for instance. There were offering prices that if farmers were to take those prices, they were going to run into a complete loss and they won't be able to continue to produce this year. So what happened was that we approached the ministry to tell them that, look, this is what's happening. So we think that the best government can do is to go to a sale and mob the uh, community to a good price so that someone will remain in business and then this year they continue to produce. They didn't, they didn't agree. They didn't listen to us. They didn't amend. Less than a man continue for us. They bought in a bed came. They told all these They paid prices two times the prices that we were even on government. So that is what made us be able to produce now. If you take soya beans that they are planning, the domestic soya bean processors have no capacity to make soya beans. So if you ban, and then you don't put measures in place to ensure that your domestic uh, 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 consumers or processors are able to buy and process, it means that some are going to hold on to these products and don't market. Once they are not in market, it will affect production in the coming season. So, other angle, even if you are going to look at it from broader perspective, Ghana is hosting African free trade continental area. We are the spectators. Free came to allow free movement of goods and services. 
Are you saying that you are breaching that protocol that you signed on? And you are the dictator to that? They tell you that at the moment, Ghana is not exporting anything. The shortage of meat, the shortage of rice, the shortage of trading. They will rather rely on Burkina, Mali, Niger, for onions and tomatoes. So if you do this and they are to retaliate, who will who, who feel the impact? So we think that the uh, government has rushed in taking that decision. Uh, they should have actually taken the time to do proper analysis, do proper consultation of the victims and the beneficiaries, so that we all have our take in it. In that case, it will work. But this ban that they are doing will not work, because we have a lot of porous bar uh, barrels. Hmm. So, but, but looking at the situation that we have on our hands where we could have, you know, food shortage, we, we, we will not have enough to go around in the country for everybody. Uh, so why should we be looking to export some of the, the grains or to export grains that we don't even have enough of? So that's what I'm telling you. At the moment, we are not even exporting. We don't have anything there. What we are going to produce, you know, what we are going to uh, to harvest now, what we are going to harvest now, it's where our expectations are. But at the moment, we are rather important. So when we do that, and these countries have to retaliate, what will be the effect? So we are saying that they need to be cautious. They need to at least take time and do broader consultation. Even if you want to do that, you have to give some guarantee that with this ban, you are not going to sell at a loss. What price is government proposing? Or they just want to say that, oh, okay, as a farmer, you produce, and then we offer you any price, you should take it. Once you do that, you may have a small, you will take the small that we produce. But coming here, many farmers will run at a loss, and they won't be interested in producing again. The young that, the young that, they cannot even do it in the first year. If they can do it, how were they not able to prevent the solar fertilizer from going through the same body? And now if it's food, they will be able to prevent it. So we, we think that we are willing to contribute to supplying food to address food security needs of the country. But we think that they need to do it properly. They need to do proper consultation. Let's all plan together. We, we, we all want to support the country. Why would I have to go and sell my produce outside when I have my, my own uh, uh, siblings, my own friends, and then the same produce? But let's plan properly so that it doesn't backfire. So speaking of plan pr planning properly, right, and you talk about more consultation, what would you want to see? What would you want to what would you want to be done? In the first place, the Freedom Farmers Association were the first association to raise this alarm. We provided information to government. We provided information to Ghanaians through our first briefing where your, your your men were there. We told them the signal and the impact. At the beginning, they tried to downplay it, but now they admit it. So what prevents you from sitting down with us to plan about this? So this has happened. What do we do next? So that we can all bring our take in it. We don't have a problem with banning. But we think that if you are banning, you should put measures in place to ensure that the small that we produce, we are able to sell. Is, is that to say that when all of this was being done, uh, there was no consultation you know, by the agri ministry and the other agencies? Uh, of the Peasant Farmers Association, for example. You... Yeah, it was last week we also heard from the media that the minister will be announcing mitigation measures. We also heard it from the media. Okay, so we think that the proper thing is for us to have done in-house planning together with key stakeholders concerned. For them to give their recommendation, maybe banning should not just be the number one thing that we need to do. Yeah, like I said, if you are banning, are we now on the, uh, the African coordinator free trade area policy that Ghana is the sectarian too? So, so the thing. if they, we plan, that we can have other alternatives. That because last year we gave fantastic uh, um, um, uh, proposals. Now look, all the, most of the farmers we even support them with input, and then they always look for us for market. So, if government have limited warehouses. When we start production, no farmer is interested in selling it outside at the beginning. It's only that when they don't get market, that's where the uh, outsiders come to buy. So let's go at the bumper harvest. We mop all what is produced. And then store in those uh, designated warehouses. In the, in the period of that, they release them into the market. But if it rolls into balance, 
Meanwhile, you also depend on those countries for your other food needs. What do you think they'll do? You think they'll sit down and just allow you to restrict your own and allow the to come in? It's going to backfire. Or we rather feel the impact more. Now, looking at how we, we got here and, you know, some of the things that have happened that has resulted in, 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 in this drought, we, we know that, for example, um, there was a promise of a one village, one dam. Do you think if that project or that policy or that intervention had been done properly, um, it may have, miti may have mitigated the effects of the rains not coming down? Yeah, you are right, because... Um we just have to look at the objectives of the one village, one dam. And the reason why all the dams were restricted in the northern part of the country, it was because the raining part in the drought always affect that part of the country. So the one village, one dam was ensure that farmers around that part of the country are able to produce all year round when there are no even rains. So the one village, one dam was meant to store rain so that in the period of drought, or when the rains are not coming, we rely on that. And we have mentioned this time and time and time over, that the dams were poorly constructed, and they were not serving the purposes for which they were constructed. Today, travel and go to where the dams are constructed, see whether there is water. As we did our monitoring and presented the report to the ministry, that is exactly what happened. The dams are there, and they are not performing that good. So if the dams were properly constructed, in addition to the problem of the petrol dam that we we'll be advocating for, and tell you, my brother, it wouldn't be as well here. This draft we are talking about, the draft spells we are talking about, it's not only in Ghana. It's happening in Burkina. It's happening in there. They, they are producing. Simply because their policy makers saw the meat and had the person to invest in that gaps. So at least their farmers are able to still rely on those dugouts to get water to produce. Then we always sit there and say, oh, we are the dead basket of Africa. We are the dead basket of this and that. Yet we are not doing anything. So, to me, I think government should just admit. The way we made this, they should admit and stop defending anything. When they fail, they still try to defend. I don't know for what reason. They should admit that the one village, one dam policy failed. Attempt to construct Togo Dam also failed. Because if these things were done properly, by now we will not be crying as they're doing now. And they are not still getting it right. They are still repeating the same thing with this uh, press statement, uh, press conference that was done yesterday. Mm. Um, Dr. Nyaba, we'll have to leave the conversation here, but I'm grateful that you've spoken to us here on the Morning Star. Thank you. You've just heard us speak to Dr. Charles Nyaba. He is a former um, executive, uh, he's a former executive director for the peasant farmers association speaking to us this morning here on the morning star uh, he's been reacting to the rest of measures that have been announced by the agric ministry the finance ministry the defense ministry to deal with the situation of drought uh, that is happening in the northern part of the country uh, there are about seven or eight regions critically if you look at it that have been affected uh, by this drought the rains have not come down so because of that crops that farmers have planted have not been able to yield and uh, a lot of farmers have lost their investments. They've lost their crops. That is why these raft of measures have been announced. And uh, Dr. Nyamba believes that, well, uh, things could have been done better. Uh, more planning could have gone into it. And he doesn't necessarily even agree uh, with the ban on exportation of our grains. I mean, he's even of the opinion that <laughs> we are even importing a lot of the things into the country because we don't even have enough here. So what, what are they talking about? But the government outlined an estimated 8 billion or 500 million US dollars uh, plan on various interventions mainly to support the farmers who have been affected by this dry weather to ensure that there is food security in the country. And we're told that the funds are going to be sought from a combination of con the contingency fund uh, budgetary alignment and the develop and development partners that we have. So, uh, the Minister for Food and Agriculture, uh, Dr. Brian Champong, he addressed uh, the press yesterday, and he's asked, he's saying that um, the farmers in these affected areas had lost investments of maybe about 3.5 billion Ghana cities, and there's a potential revenue loss of about 10.4 billion 
Ghana cities. So according to the research that they have done at the Agric Ministry, according to Brian Champong, um, there are about 928,523 farmers and then 1.86 million hectares of crops that were at risk. And if nothing is done about it, it could be a very big problem that we have on our hands. They could lose an investment of up to 7.4 billion, right? 7.4 billion Ghana cities. That is if there's a total crop failure. So these are issues that we need to look at. And the drought conditions have far-reaching implications for food security and livelihoods. And the affected regions, when you put all of them together, the affected regions, especially in the northern part of the country, it contributes to about 62% of the country's grain supply annually, right? And it just tells you the gravity of the situation that we are faced with, you know, on our hands. And so we need to, we need to deal with it. And of course, the agri minister has already said that uh, they are going to deal with the situation by, you know, providing all of these uh, monies uh, for the farmers, you know, per hectare. And even with the monies that are being provided per hectare, um, even if a farmer is farming an acre, right, the farmer spends up to about 1,200, 1,500 in some cases to farm an acre of grain. I mean, if you are doing maize and all of that. And there's a farmer speaking. And yeah. That, must, that point must be made. Yeah. You're a farmer yourself, yeah. 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 So, I mean, <laughs> the hectare yeah. for a thousand cities, I don't know. Well, well, this is an it's intervention. It's woefully in inadequate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's woefully inadequate. But, oh, well, w one would want to argue that the government is just providing a certain intervention yeah. because you're a farmer. You know that when you are doing agriculture, there yes, is risk, risk involved and you could lose it. So yeah. uh, the government is just stepping in to help you a little bit. And so yep. uh, it's not something that you should complain about mm -hmm. uh, too much. But, I mean, if you look at the, you know, the situation, all these monies that you are putting into doing your farm, all these money that you are putting into doing your farm and uh, you are losing these monies yeah. and then uh, the intervention that is coming in is just uh, giving you thousand cities per hectare well <laughs> some will say that a little is better than nothing at all isn't it yes that's, but that's, that's, that's true but anyway that's true so all right Lantam, let me yeah. finish the states okay man, so um, yeah let's get back to the before, newspapers before we and then wrap it all up former executive director of the mm -hmm. peasant farmers yeah. i was on the daily statesman yeah. there was a story about eight billion relief for farmers to mitigate effects of drought that was uh, on the back of that he had that interview also president commission school junction mm -hmm. motorway road and neip director ndc's sme tax exemptions proposal not new um these are the least stories in the daily statesman okay so um, I've got the new crusading guide now. Uh, of course, uh, the same story about uh, the ban on green export uh, is there. Also, extra 200 million Ghana cities is needed for the Aconsombo resettlement program. That's according to the Minister for Works and Housing, Kujo yeah. Um Delays in posting nurses, nurses threatens quality health care. Reverend Dr. Awuku Jampo has been speaking on that. And also CDD and uh, Media Foundation for West Africa. <laughs> uh, guess what they are doing? <laughs> uh, they are suing government over the SML deal. They believe that the SML deal is bad. And so monies need to be recovered. And uh, guess who their lawyer is? Who? Martin Pebu. <laughs> yeah. Martin Pebu is a lawyer of the CSOs. So they are suing government over the SML deal. So that's uh, also there on the new crusading guide. And uh, Mahamas, hmm. this this SML thing, eh? this SML thing, I think we were told that investigations were going to be conducted into it, right? Mm -hmm. So wh what happened? I mean, the investigations were conducted. Yes. The president issued the uh, a white paper on it. White paper on it. Yes, and says. And after yeah. the sales, what happened? They said no. The, the the deal is back on. DRA announced that they they still see some mm -hmm. benefits from diary because we went so. through you know we went through that report yeah. some things were flagged yeah you know and all of that but I, at the end of the day it seems to me that what sml is doing GRE already has the capacity to do so why is sml doing it mm -hmm. you know and the csos are not they are not happy yeah uh, about this anyway martin people will lead them to court so <laughs> we'll see what happens uh he's their lawyer yeah so 
Mahama's 24 hour economy proposal leaves tourism industry operators confused. So that's also there on the New Crusading Guide newspaper. So, okay, yeah, that's the final paper that I have. I have the Chronicle, mm -hmm. um, and it says Akufuado breaks ground for 10 lane concrete Accra Tema motorway project. Uh, yeah, um, once the Nkrumah one is concrete, mm -hmm. uh, we can only add concrete. At least so it's going to be concrete. Yes. The 10 lane is going to be concrete. Exactly. Wow. Because I'm not sure we're going to undo everything that has been done. Yes, we might um, re uh, reconstruct it one way or the other, but it must be concrete. Otherwise, it will be the testimony to our retrogression as a country, right? Mm. From concrete to asphalt. After 60 years or 60 years back, we we're doing concrete. And now that we think we've advanced, right? We have more resources. So we have everything in abundance. We are now undoing the concrete to do asphalt. You get a point. So uh, it makes sense. It makes sense well, that concrete lasts my, my biggest longer. concern concrete lasts with regards to that yeah. project so, yeah. has to do with, with how they are going to make the road also accessible to yeah. the communities along the along motorway. The motorway yeah. Remember when it was being constructed yeah. in the in the 50s? There were no communities there. communities there. For which yeah. reason now, if you go to the Tama end, there is even an interchange. Yeah. I'm looking forward to a plan that would also include people who live along that stretch. Yeah. So it becomes easier for them to also use exit and enter the motorway. I agree. I agree. The other headlines here, please smoke out East Legon Robbers. Through intelligence led operations, iPhone, Mercedes Benz, Fortuna retrieved. And it comes with a picture of the suspect here, three young guys. How do you know they are young? Their faces are covered. Ah, yeah, but you can so still, you you can, you can still tell. You can tell from the, the from, look, from the, haircut. the structure, the haircut, <laughs> and everything. I've been too seen old people with this oh, kind of haircut. No, no, they are young people. Don't worry. Ah. Okay, so let me, don't worry. Let me give you the story. The story is here. We know whether they are young or old. So the police intelligence directorate, uh, that PID of the Ghana Police Service, has arrested 30 year old suspect Isaac Brenner Eshon for alleged robbery. He was arrested on August 21, 2024, following an intelligence-led operation launch on 19, 20, August 19, 2024, after a robbery incident in East, in East Legon. A police source has told the Chronicle. Now goes for to say, two victims had been robbed at gunpoint in front of their home, losing a Mercedes-Benz C180, two iPhones, iPods, and an unspecified amount of money. According to, the, according to the source, the police retrieved an iPhone 13 Pro Max belonging to one of the victims along with a Samsung, a Samsung Galaxy A15 from the suspect. The chronicle was further informed that during interrogation, Eshon revealed that his accomplice was a 47-year-old Peter Amuzu, also known as Master P, and an ex-convict recently... Master, Master P. Master P, yes. Okay. An ex-convict and recently released from his own prisons, recidivism. Good morning, Anaba Anamua. There's a recidivism that yeah. Nanavan Amo was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yes, being released from prison and then committing a crime again and going back. Uh, yeah. On August 23, 2024, police apprehended Amuzu at his hideout in East Legon. Another stolen item, an iPhone 13 Pro Max belonging to one of the victims, was recovered from him. A further investigations led to suspect to led suspect led the subject to disclose that they had sold the stolen Mercedes Benz to a man known as Ibrahim Mohammed, not me. Also called Kindawa. <laughs> <laughs> also called Kindawa. Or Alaji Mike, a 32 year old resident of Tamale. The police on August 24, 2024, arrested Ibrahim Mohammed in Tamale along with the stolen Mercedes Benz, three additional vehicles, a Toyota Fortuna, Toyota Vit, and a Toyota a model unspecified, were also recovered. The police have assured the public that investigations are ongoing and that they remain committed to ensuring that criminals are not giving any space to disturb the peace and security of the country. Mm. Yeah. So okay. We are going forward, not backwards, President Kufaro. And uh, quotation for this morning. Okay, government government is mobilizing five hundred million dollars to address food crisis. Yeah. And quotation for this morning, John ten ten. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it and have it in full. Thank or you. Or in the uh, uh, have it to the full or have it in abundance in yes. some uh, versions. Yes. Yeah. The thief cometh no uh, cometh only to steal, to kill, yeah. and destroy. Yeah. Yeah. But I have come that ye may have life and have it 
abundantly. Including the tips, right? <laughs> oh, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Everybody. All right. The final one I have is the Insight newspaper. A Buaka North race, NDC. Ozzy set to grab seats from MPP's chief Buffalo. Also, Mahama, a Kufuado Baumia government, the biggest political scam in Ghana, and government urged to prioritize and boost herbal medicine industry. Eye infection outbreak among children linked to human contact, according to Dr. Obenyako. And MPP has failed Ghanaians and must be voted out. Who is making this claim? Al Haji Jalali. Yanusa tells NDC supporters mm. in Hamburg. Well, we will be hearing a lot of these things because we are in the campaign season, obviously. Yeah. Um, you've got a BNFT? Yes, I've got a BNFT. Mm-hmm. Um, agriculture, agriculture. Only 3% of agriculture land irrigated. Listen to that. Oh, let really? Me take, let me take that again. Only 3% Only of, 3% agriculture, of land agriculture land in the Uganda. entire country is, is irrigate, irrigated. irrigated. And that's according to the World Bank. Wow. Let me give you a bit of that story. Story by Wisdom Johnny Nwepe. The World Bank has said only 3% of cultivated land in the country is irrigated, a phenomenon the bank indicates could stifle Ghana's agricultural resilience. In East Africa Can End Poverty Report under the Delivering Irrigation for Enhanced Productivity and Climate Resilience in Ghana category, the bank disclosed that climate change poses unprecedented challenges to Ghanaian agriculture. Climate change, according to the World Bank, reduces the predictability of rainfall, increases temperatures, and lengthens the duration of dry periods, as we are experiencing today. Mm. And I, I've added that one. The World Bank noted uh, Ghana possesses substantial irrigation potential with an estimate of irrigable land spanning from 360,000 to 1.9 million hectares. But just about 3% of cultivated land is properly irrigated for agricultural purposes. Mm. Underutilization of the said potential, according to the bank, risk farmers facing the brunt of shifting weather patterns and extreme events as the country's farming system is predominantly rain-fed. Ghana has 104 central pivot irrigation systems, each covering a minimum of 40 acres. But about 98% of these systems and facilities are not functional. Wow. So even the 3%. Yeah. 98 percent wow not functional that's a serious, over the last decade that's a serious situation. yes over the last last decade the world bank has committed more than 200 million us dollars in loans and grants to meet ghana's climate smart agribusiness needs agriculture needs a chunk of these monies were meant to revitalize abandoned the irrigation schemes across the country but some stakeholders believe these funds have been squandered <laughs> did you hear that yeah. The World Bank has provided us funds to revitalize well, this. The, the, the monies have been squandered. Yeah, and they will, write, they will be right to be thinking that because if these funds have been provided to the do the ABC, will be up so why, why, why are they? Now, listen why to this. They? Indeed, an alarming 11.9 million US dollars was spent on mobilization to kickstart construction of the 993 million <laughs> worth Palugu multi purpose dam only. For the project to fail, yeah. Oh, no, project has not yet failed. Oh, well, okay, there is nothing on site, okay, that much we can see. Mobilizing, but already 11.9 million US dollars has, has been, been spent, spent on mobilization. On mobilization, and mobilization simply means that moving equipment to site, building the contractor shed, and then uh, uh, some uh, buying some cooking utensils mm, so, it, so you can cook and then get <laughs> things done essentially. You know, trying to get a few things here and there done. That's mobilization. <laughs> Unfortunately, the mobilization has not been done. It's the most important aspect of the contract. You know that, right? Once you get mobilization fee, hooray! Yeah. We are playing in this country too much. Anyway, uh, so for starfm.com.gh this morning, um, Stone Boy challenges a Grammy article over omission from Hip Life Influencers list. Stoneboy. Yeah, Stoneboy. Stoneboy. <laughs> Stoneboy. <laughs> Bim. Bim. Yeah, one guard. Yeah. So, um, let me read a little bit of that story. Uh, let's hear what Stoneboy is saying um, <laughs> about uh, this. So, in a recent interview with Portfolio Them, renowned Ghanaian artist Livingston Eche Satekla, better known as Stone Boy, expressed his dissatisfaction with an article published on the Grammys official website. 
The article, dated August 21, 2024, aimed to highlight key figures who have influenced the evolution of hip life, a genre that blends high life with hip hop. However, Stoneboy took issue with the article for failing to include him on the list of notable influences. Uh, Stoneboy, a prominent figure in the reggae dancehall scene, took to social media on August 23, 2024, to voice his frustration. In a fiery post on his uh, X handle, he criticized the article for what he perceived as an oversight, stating, Whoever wrote this article is interestingly missing the name Stoneboy. Uh, recorded Academy, do due diligence before you publish half dosed articles aiming to capture the true image of the state of Ghanaian sound. And uh, this post has sparked a wave of backlash on social media with many questioning why Stone Boy, primarily known for his contributions to reggae and dancehall, would expect to be included in a list focused on hip life artists. And the controversy uh, quickly ignited a broader conversation about the story of hip life, its pioneers, mm. and the documentation of Ghana's music scene. So there are those who are saying, Stone Boy, you are doing reggae, dancehall. Why are you fighting for <laughs> hip life? And uh, there are those who believe that, look, uh, Stone Boy also does some music which can be considered as hip life. Mm -hmm. And he's been one of the pioneers, you know, uh, of that. So, and he has been one of the people who have changed the Ghana music scene as far as hip life is concerned. So, uh, interesting uh, stuff there. So, uh, read more about it. That's not the end of the uh, news article. Read more about it on starfm.com.gh. Also on starfm.com.gh, uh, lecture exposes NDC on quota admissions to nursing and teacher training colleges. Don't use drip equipment for illegal mining, Simon Osei Mensa warns. Bagbing commissions state-of-the-art McCoy Sports Stadium in Nadoli. That's uh, in his constituency, the constituency yeah. in which he used to be MP4. Yeah. Ghana needs cleaning to strengthen state institutions again. That's according to Johnson, Asiedun Ketia. And also, accept vote buying cash. It is your own stolen money. The thief has returned. Asiedun Ketia to voters. Mm. And uh, MPP's manifesto is AI generated. That's according to Pablo. Uh, that's the uh, national youth organizer of the NDC, Pablo. Giorgio Pariado. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know how he knows that it was AI generated. Uh, I engage him, I think, from... Um, yeah, you engage him from Winneba. Uh, yes. He said that. Uh, he mentioned that. Yes. Uh, because the MPP is actually also accusing the NDC of editing its manifesto on the back of what the MPP mm. uh, unveiled. Anyway, so yeah, uh, what we know for sure is that there are many, many of the promises that are similar. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to citynewsroom.com. On City Newsroom uh, this morning, the stories that are trending there election 2024 reject baumia over unfulfilled 2020 promises that's according to asir unketia um voting for hama mahama will reverse ghana's progress that's according to kufuado kufuado deceived god and the clergy over the national cathedral funding that's according to ablakwa and uh let me tell you that we'll be bringing you a playback of uh, my interview with uh samuel okujo to ablakwa on state of affairs yesterday and uh He's been slamming government for failing to aid in the Akosombo, aid the Akosombo Dam victims. Mm. Uh, so all of those stories uh, will find uh, space on citynewsroom.com. Uh, let's also check out Ghana Web and uh, see the stories that are on Ghana Web today. On the front page, or should I say on the home page of Ghana Web, when you look at <laughs> uh, the news stories uh that are there okay i don't know why this is taking forever to load mm, i thought it had loaded um well, what is what is happening to the network mm. yep okay the internet connectivity mm -hmm. has decided that it wants to fool but henry quarter goes after ndc deputy general secretary over election rigging claim submit your enrollment details or face prosecution general legal counsel targets um Proof to Ghanaians, Baumia is a liar, disrespectful by and disrespectful by debating him. Nana Kumia has been speaking, and also Mahama never started and completed even one regional hospital. That's according to Information Minister Koju Oponokoma. So no, 
No, no, for I mean, my, for my uh, uh, that's now, according now. to uh, information minister now, uh, Fatima, Tu. Fatima, uh-huh. Fatima, Tu, uh, Fatima, Tu, Abu Bakar, mm-hmm. uh, information minister now. Yeah. So yeah, so that's it for uh, Ghana Web this morning. Uh, that should essentially do it for the online review and uh, the news review segment. Let's have breakfast.